Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel for another interesting review and another Dar Dark Mertsen from Hessen State. This is uh, Maria Ehrensberger uh, Pilgerstoff, uh, if I pronounce it correctly, brewed by Hochstiftliches Brauhaus Fulda, located in, uh, in Fulda in Hessen. Might be the first um, dark Märzen that I'm having and might be the first beer from the state Hessen in the heart of Germany that I'm having also. Uh, from the 1848, um, have 40 employees, uh, was called Willebroi and I'm gonna read the history about uh, Willebroi. Um, there is quite interesting this um, this brewery, uh, Hochstiftliches Brauhaus Fulda, because there's a lot of different breweries or brands that they're having. It seems like, for example, Hochstift Pils, Willbreu, Hammelburger, Vogelsberger Landbrauereien, Lauterbacher, Auerhahnbräu, Alsfelder, uh, to mention a few, um, and I can link to the website Hochstift.de to this big group, and there is a lot of history to tell about the, this uh, Hochstiftliches Brauhaus Fulda. Uh, but I'm not gonna, I'm not, I don't have time for that. I'm gonna go through the history about Willbroi instead. Willbroi, which if I understand it correctly, is the part of this uh, Hochstiftliches Brauhaus who is brewing uh, this beer, uh, Pilgerstoff. And um, I will of course also link to not only Hochstiftliches Brauhaus website, but also Willbroi's website and the website about this specific beer, because uh, it's been created one website about this specific one, since it's so unique. Um, in its beer style, um, Pilgerstoff.de, so at least three websites. But I'm gonna start with some information um, about uh, the brewery. Bavarian brewing tradition since 1791. The Hochstiftliche Brauhaus in Bavaria, formerly Willbroi, can look back on a proud history of over 200 years. As a regional family brewery, we are firmly rooted in the region with its history and tradition. According to the motto, from the region, for the region, we face up to corporate responsibility towards home, because in a family-run company, decisions are made in the long term and with a view of the future generations, without only having in mind the quick short-term success. On our website, we present the philosophy and tradition of the only remaining brewery in the Kissingen district, our Willebroi. Take a look at their history, tradition and ties to their homeland. Learn interesting facts about the active work of Will Team and our small brewery family. In addition, you can of course find out more about our rich, high quality range of beers and specialties. Join us on a virtual tour and discover it through our Willebroi. We look forward to seeing you. Welcome! And this is written by the Klesdorf family and the entire Will team. And short history. Bavarian brewing tradition since 1791. The Hochstiftliches Brauhaus in Bavaria. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, it was a little bit longer history. Uh, in the 9th century, the ecclesiastical gentleman had a pub and a brewery built in the beautiful Dölbach Valley from the Fulda Monastery. The brewery served as a station to the Hammelburg possessions and vineyards, which at that time belonged to the Hochstift Fulda, which is Prince um, um, Bishop. Uh, at that time, the brewing products there were intended exclusively at a, as a private drink for the high gentleman of the Hochstift and associated tavern. The town of Motten only emerged later over the economy. At that time, the Hochstiftliche Fuldische Amstbrauerei in Motten was one of the large estates of the Prince Bishops of Fulda. In 1791, Johann Georg Wille bought the Fürstlich Fuldische Amstbrauerei and Wirsthaus from the then Prince Bishop 
Adalbert von Harstal and thus founded the beginning of a family tradition of Villebroy and Martin over 200 years old. This venerable event is recorded in a document on the right in which literally says Hofkammer Actum Fulda und Hochfürstlicher Hof und Rentkammer on the weekly sheet due to December 12, 1791, 100 FL annually permanent Erbzins and Aktsisch publicly advertised and today's Tagfahrt is scheduled for a possibly more distant bid. Although you keep this appointment open until 12 p.m. nobody will appear further than the imaged Will with his cousin Valentin Kump von Petersberg who then immediately wins the bid for um, the conditions previously agreed by the latter Fluk was wanted. Uh, yeah, that was from uh, from a sign uh, document. After 1900, the Ville Bear was also delivered to other restaurants and became increasingly popular. The possible positive development ended during First World War, that when the brewing business had to be stopped in uh, 1919 due to lack of raw materials. All brewery inventory was dismantled or destroyed during the war. After seven years of standstill, the widow Ter Teresia Ville and son Karl resumed the brewing under the most arduous conditions in 1926. Slowly the brewery went up. Yet another setback was World War II and Carl Will's captivity. After returning home the brewery was placed under trust management. It was not until 1948 that he got back to the rundown family business and managed the brewery's fortunes. The decades 1950 and 1960 were characterized by the entrepreneurial spirit of the Will family. When the beer was taken out of state, Prince uh, Price maintenance as stable in 1952, the much needed rise could finally begin. And that's quite interesting how, why there are so many breweries in Germany. They all started in different parts of Germany and uh, it wasn't possible to uh, deliver beer uh, on a long way, so people did support their, um, their of course, uh, own towns breweries and that lives on which is a good thing substantial investments and courageous decisions were rewarded with great success and the emerge of the ultra modern brewery for example in 1955 a state of the art 24 meter high storage cellar with constant cooling was built for the mutton beer which was still laboriously stored in a floor cellar outside the village and later in the deep cellars of the brewery the high rise storage cellar then had to be expanded from four to seven floors within a very short period of time in order to optimally store the growing quantities of beer and serve the enormously increasing demand. For its 175th anniversary in 1966, Villeboy had developed into the third largest private brewery in Bavaria with 210 employees and a fleet of 21 trucks. For that time, this meant a rapid upswing of the formerly small country brewery, with now, which now successfully served almost entire Federal Republic with its peers with the slogan I want will. The heart of the brewery was renewed and enlarged as early as uh, 1953. In 1961 and 1963, the capacity of the brew house was expanded again in accordance with the steadily, steadily increasing demand. After that, it was no longer a volume increases but quality improvements and energy savings that were decisive for further investments. For example, extensive investments were made in modernizing brewery technology, particularly in the 1980s. The gentle, cooking the gentle cooking method was introduced in 2005 using the new brewing kettle technology. The brew is now gently heated to only 98 degrees Celsius. Cooking that is harmful to the valuable minerals and vitamins is no longer necessary. This is good for our beer and also the environment. In recent years, this has resulted in an energy savings uh, in the brew house of over 50%. The beer drinker is happy about both the protection of natural ingredients and the increasingly scarce resources. Just like the brew house and cellars popping, which had uh, been manual until then, was soon unable to meet the steadily increasing demand for bottled beer. Therefore, an automatic bottle capper with output of around 10,000 bottles per hour were, were, was installed for the first time in 1958. However, after just a few, few years, its output was too low and was replaced in 1962 by a more modern bottle filling plant 
with an output of 24,000 bottles per hour. The system currently used in filling mode offers sufficient capacity with output of 28,000 bottles per hour. Due to the continuous renewal of the individual system, the progress of uh, the last few years was met so that the bottles are filled using only the latest technology. A major modernization step was carried out in 2007 with a state-of-the-art bottle washing machine that saves water and cleaning agents. Uh, in addition, the system was equipped with a new energy-saving tunnel pasteurizer in 2008. This serves to preserve the mixed beer beverages, non-alcoholic beers and soft drinks containing sugar, uh, malted drink or ginal um, spicy uh, libello lemonades. Uh, to mention the other beverages from this brewery. Uh, the gradual gentle heating of the continuous bottles approximately 75 degrees Celsius ensures that these products like the beers, which however are not pasteurized, which is a good thing, uh, also have a good shelf life. Until the mid 1960s, the draft beer at Villebroy was only filled in wooden barrels, mostly in the unimaginable capacity of 100 liters. 30 liter barrels are usually, are usually common today. In 1970, there was a changeover to aluminium kegs with the stabbing sword for the draft beer bottling. These barrels were much easier to clean and also easier to handle in terms of weight thanks to the stabbing rapier, made it possible to tap with external carbonic acid. This was a real milestone for draft beer freshness because it creates a counter pressure in the beer line and uh, can thus prevent the natural carbonic carbon dioxide bound in the beer from escaping and losing its li liveliness. In 1992, stainless steel barrels with KEG tapping have been used exclusively. The modern KEG, KEG valve replaces the stab, is easier to clean and thus reduces the risk of a freshly tapped barrel becoming contaminated. And also in the following years invested heavily in the future of the brewery and the beers of the region. The modern de-alcoholization system from 2013 enables the produ to produce non-alcoholic beers with a particularly gentle and convincing taste. Thanks to this technology where we participate in the constantly growing market for non-alcoholic beers, our products enjoy extremely successful development in this promising and fast-growing market. After the death of Helmut Will, the son of Karl uh, Willeboy was taken over by the neighboring family uh, brewery in Fulda, the then Hochstift Brauerei in 1987. Both the fact that these two regional breweries belong together as well as their common high foundation roots were the reason for the change of the name in 1994 to its current name Hochstiftliches Brauhaus in Bayern and Hochstiftliches Brauhaus Fulda. This merge was expanded in 1997 to include the Lauterbach Riedesel Castle Brewery, including the Kapar Sale Broischlitz. The family brewery is looking to the future for their regionally brewed and local beers with confidence. We are firmly connected to our home and its people. Our large assortment testifies uh, to our love for regional beer specialties, with, which can satisfy every beer taste. Let yourself be convinced and find out more about our regional brewing specialties on our, our brew page. Uh, that was uh, quite much about this brewery and about this specific one, the uh, Pilgerstoff. Maria Ehrenberger Pilgerstoff. It's possible to read the following. This is a very interesting beer, I should mention that. I maybe say that too often, but this is a unique one compared to the other ones I've had on the channel and maybe comparing to almost all other uh, German bears. Uh, our Ehrenberger Pilgerstoff is named after the traditional pilgrimage site in Rhön, at the foot of which is the Hochstiftliche Brauhaus in Bavaria and Motten, a very special beer specialty not only for thirsty pilgrims' throats According to the old tradition, the pilgrim material matures in the cold storage cellar for at least eight weeks into a full-bodied and perfectly rounded masterpiece. The rustique beer specialty is presented in a clear look of a dark amber, which is a velvet with a velvety soft foam crown. It inspires with its strong spicy body, which shows slight hints of roasted malt notes. At the same time, it is fresh with its... Um, 
from its first taste and perfectly harmonious in the finish. Enjoy the uh, pilgrim stuff, uh, which means pilgrim material, best in the original pilgrim stone mug where it unfolds its extraordinary rustic character the best. Uh, I don't have a stone uh, mug, unfortunately, but that's uh, from which uh, Germans often are drinking from. Really gives the old tradition which this beer should have, but unfortunately I have to go with my normal uh, beer glass. According to the motto, a long train pilgrims up to Ehrenberg, first to the church and then to the judge, uh, and then to the to the mug. Uh, this one and not uh, judge, as I said. Uh, and yeah, uh, this is uh, this very special beer specialty is named after its origin because our. Brewery is located directly at the foot of the famous pilgrimage site Maria Ehrenberg in Rhön. The pilgrim material uh, Pilgerstoff measures in cold beer cellars into a full-bodied and perfectly rounded masterpiece for at, late, for at least eight weeks, as I mentioned before. It presents itself uh, with a clear look of dark amber, strong roasted malt flavors and velvety soft foam crown, as I mentioned before also. Uh, type. Dunkles Märzenbier, bottom fermented, character, uh, full bodied, strong, multi aromatic, spicy, light roasted malt note, color, dark amber, glossy, uh, barrels, 30 liter, 20 liter, bottle is 0.5 liter, euro bottle, 12% uh, original Bort strength, 5.2% alcohol. Now, finally, the tasting part of this one. I'm really interested about this one. Uh, Here's the cap as well, and of course, as you can see, first of all, it's the, uh, as I call it, thick bottle type, not the tall bottle type, but the thick bottle type, which is looking very nice, and it really gives a really old impression, this uh, this beer with its label, and I really like that very much. You see the, the church right here, which also fits really nice to this one. Pilgert ein langer Zug, den Maria Ehrenberg hin auf, erst zur Kirche, dann zum Krug, Genuss mit Tradition. Diese süffische Spezialität wird nach Handwer handwerklicher Tradition von unserem Braumeister gebraut und zu einem mattbetonen Meisterstück geredelt. Maria Ehrenberger Pilgerstoff. Äh, eine aus besten Rohstoffen gebraute Bierspezialität mit Samtisch weicher Schaumkrone, der kräftig vollmundische Geschmack und der harmonisch vollendete Körper bieten einen Biergenuss der ganz besonderen Art nicht nur für durstige Pilgerkehlen gebraut nach dem Reinheitsgebot von 1516 Vollbierspezialität mit 12% Stammwürze, Zutaten Wasser, Gerstenmalz, Hopfen hergestellt für das Hochstiftliche Brauhaus in Bayern, GmbH and Company KG, Pilgerstoff DE, uh, linked to the Bruce website. Uh, Motten is the town. Uh, yeah, I think that's it uh, regarding every information that I found on the bottle. 5.2 is the volume. One last look of the label. Beautiful logo with the church Maria Ehrenberger Pilgerstoff. This is a very interesting bear. Um, I don't know if I ever had a Dunkelmarzen before on the channel, I don't think so. Uh, I don't know how many there are at least on this uh, with this beer style, but really interesting. A little bit uh, less alcohol person that maybe some other Dunkelbeers from outside of Germany is having, but 5.2 is perfect. So this is going to be really, really interesting to try. Let's open it one up, the Maria Ehrenberger Pilger stuff. And pour it up, of course. I'm really, really excited about this one. With its dark roasted maltiness that is always is with this dunkel beers. There we have it. Put this one right here. Really, really looking good, doesn't it? With its two finger white compact format. Not as dunkel as I thought. You see all the small bubbles raised up, I hope. 
looking really really beautiful you see that all the small bubbles looking perfect and very very compact white crown also this is looking fantastic very amber nice not super dark I've had many pairs that is uh, this darker than this one so I'm really really looking forward to this one very unique one in its bear style and, and history and uh, yeah I just think this is gonna be really 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 great to try uh, for regarding the the dark bears this is probably the least dark one very amber in color uh, if you look into the light looks amazing to me always nice with something else than the hellas and, and pills that I also love but that I all, uh, mostly drink let's get the aroma quite quick fantastic roast malt um, not too dark real fresh and nice this is how I want a, a, a darker beer this is gonna be really amazing this one so high expectations of it let's try it the Pilger stuff from Wilbroy Post This really is a, a fantastic pair. Um, fantastically fresh and um, well balanced in style. Um, the uh, roasted maltiness is coming a little bit afterwards. Definitely not too strong uh, in the roasted malt notes that I'm. Uh, I've had uh, darker beers before that is for me. I was used to um, paler beers like uh, German Sour. Um, I've had beers before that is a little bit too uh, too generous with its uh, roasted maltiness uh, in the taste, but this one is is perfectly balanced and it's fantastically fresh and really really nice. Big big recommendation. This is a beer that you just have to find and have to try, in my opinion. It's really something new, even for me, you see, as I always used to mention, uh, still compact white crown that isn't disappearing, that's a good thing, keeps the right taste in the glass. This is a fantastic one. It's really, really amazing in my opinion. I had high expectations of it also. It really tastes amazing. So I can only recommend you this one. I like to mention good things about uh, breweries who deserve it, like this one, because this one is fantastic. Um, so the long waiting um, was something that uh, uh, was worth the long wait because it's so amazing. <clears throat> I must say it's fantastic or fresh. Fantastically great in taste. Definitely something amazing. Um, I I really want to drink this one again. Um, it's a great, great beer. Great uh, Dunkel Mautzen. Very unique beer style to me. I didn't even know it, it existed, uh, Dunkel Mautzen. But this is Dunkel Mautzen and it's fantastic in, in, in its taste. I must say so. It's really, really great. There we have it, the um, Pilger stuff um, from um, Billbroy and um, it's a must. And uh, what more to say, except of that I hope you like my channel, hope you continue to follow, for, uh, continue to follow it for more interesting beer reviews. There is a lot of interesting ones that will be coming up in the future as always. Uh, this this was one of the most interesting ones that I've had for a while uh, since it's that unique the Pilger stuff and um, Yeah Like comment subscribe and hope I see you again in next German beer review